It is a story that has often been told. The story of a secluded island, ringed with powdery white sand, floating on a sea of clear blue-green water. Behind the shroud of myth, it lay quietly, shielded from the outside world by the absence of modern comforts. A secret paradise known only to locals. Until one day, it is discovered by the West, and word spreads, and the island is catapulted into instant celebrity. This is the story of nearly every famous beach in the Philippines, and it is the story of the once impenetrable islands off the Karamoan Peninsula. It is, in fact, the story of the entire province of Camarines Sur, to which this magnificent specter of Eden belongs. Camarines Sur is located in the southeastern portion of Luzon, in an area known as the Bicol region. Here lies the tale of daring conquistadors and enterprising friars, of red-hot chilies and sweet coconut milk, of surveyors and survivors, of paradise found, lost, and regained. No longer obscured by the shadow of Mount Mayon and the whale sharks of Sorsogon, Kamsur is a province poised to wakeboard its way into the hearts of the world's adventure seekers and wedge the memory of its beauty there. It is a beauty that first beguiled the Western world in the mid-16th century, spurred by the thirst for gold of Spanish explorer Miguel López de Legazpi. In 1573, he sent his grandson, Juan de Salcedo, on a surveying expedition along the Bicol River. Salcedo found his way into a settlement that Spanish friars had penetrated a few years before. He called the place Los Camarines, after the many camali, or storage shacks, that the natives had erected. The founding of the province is commemorated every fourth week of May through the Kaugma Festival. Kaugma means a good time in Bicolano. The way it is celebrated changes as the meaning of a good time changes for the people of the province. And if there is one thing in recent memory that has redefined the meaning of a good time in Kamsur, it would have to be wakeboarding. In 2006, the Camarines Sur Water Sports Complex, or CWC, was opened to revive tourism in the province. Located only 15 minutes from the Pili Airport, where short flights from Manila arrive daily, the appeal of CWC was irresistible to say the least. With it came the rapid metamorphosis that launched the new face of Hamsur to the world. The languid land, once more famous for pili nuts and epic religious processions, went from abaca fiber to fiberglass in the blink of an eye. This extreme makeover by way of extreme sports influenced even the manner of celebrating the Kaugma festival. Street parades and beauty pageants are still held, but new activities have been added, such as 4x4, skateboard, and biking competitions. The centerpiece of the festivities is a grand wakeboarding competition, open to international, not just local contenders the better to show off the world-class features of CWC's cable park. World-class is a label that is often abused in the business of travel, but in the case of CWC, worldly travelers confirm that this label is justified. One of Asia's top wakeboarders, Tatsanai Kwako Onrat, is a regular visitor at CWC. I like the nature here and was so surprised. I've been here for like many times in Manila and I feel like oh it's it's hard it's hard to be like the some somewhere like perfect like here. 
and it's happened now and I like to be here like this is my third time here. I, I have been in uh, Germany a bit cold for me because my country is a bit hot country and here it's not different. Here is one of the best cable park in the world that I would like to be. I've been in Singapore, in uh, Indonesia, but in Singapore the water is quite choppy because they have the wall on the side and but here you they have like the beach on the side. I can like relax, I can take off my uh, shoe and I just walk all around the lake. It's so relaxed. French-Canadian Jocelyn Boileau, who was not into wakeboarding before she arrived in Kamsur, found herself staying in CWC for two months and has gotten hooked. Um, I first found out about it when my boyfriend came with his brother and they came last year and they were venting to everyone about it. So when he said he was coming back this year, I figure I don't wakeboard but I don't care. It sounds great. I'm going to come anyway. Um, and now I've come and I love wakeboarding and I'm going to be doing it for a while. <laughs> Well, before I came here, like I said, I'd never done it, but I'd been to a couple of um, parks and I could never make it around. Um, they're a lot tougher and the corners are much more rigid. And then I came here my first try, a little scared because the time before I took, I tried for about 25 times, never made the first corner, um, but I got it right away. So if anything, yeah, I know why they call this the best park in the world because it was, it was easy. Even the local boys who grew up on the rice fields around CWC have become part of the wakeboarding action. Yung wala pa naman itong CWC ma'am, halos kaya lang kami tambay lang. As itong natayo na itong CWC ma'am, at nanonood kami dito, di wala kami magawa, di nagsasabi kami yung practice na break dance. Tapos nakita kami ni Gob, niya kami dito maglaro ma'am sa CWC. Ang tapos sabi niya, kaya ninyo yan sa tubig. Sa lupa nga kaya ninyong gawin eh, sa tubig kaya. As yun ma'am, tigtry namin. Konting tiyaga, nakakakwende, nakatoto din. For those who have never tried it, zipping around a man-made lake for hours while clinging to an overhead cable and balancing on a five-foot fiberglass board may seem almost absurd. To appreciate the thrill of cable skiing, it is important to know that the sport, just like the spirit that willed CWC into existence out of a rice field, is all about making the impossible possible. Cable skiing makes wakeboarding possible even without a boat. Wakeboarding in turn makes surfing possible even when there are no waves. Apart from the cable park, the unusual lodgings at CWC are also attractions in themselves. The most affordable place to stay is the converted container van. The mid-range quarters are the cabanas, which are big, one-room bungalows. The villas are the most luxurious among all the lodgings, with their own private verandas and perimeter walls that add extra layers of peace and quiet amid all the sporting action. The villas share a private swimming pool and each comes with a personal outdoor hot tub. Those who are not into wakeboarding will not be deprived of enjoyment at CWC. There are swimming pools, massage decks, a skate park, a bike park, a sports shop, a game room, and a restaurant that has started to build its own Epicurean fan base. Asian, American, and European dishes ensure no one among CWC's multicultural guests goes hungry. CWC's lechon, or roast suckling pig, is cooked with traditional Bicolano spices using a special technique that makes the skin red and crispy. 
yet keeps the meat moist and tender. Another novelty of the restaurant is the Laing Pizza. This hybrid Bicolano and Italian dish is a creation of Chef Carlo de la Concepcion, who was brought to Camsur from Manila to oversee the gastronomic concerns of the province's tourism projects. Like most great inventions, Carlo concocted the Laing Pizza by accident. It started, I wanted to make a basic spinach pizza, and you know, just on a whim. And I was looking around and I was out of spinach, so all I had was tar leaves. And uh, so I thought I'd do that. And um, went goes well with uh, coconut milk, so we used that as a sauce. And then from there, we just kept it kept getting closer to vehicle food, which I was new to at the time and I was really into. So we made it spicy. It ended up basically lying. And then uh, uh, I wanted some meat in it, no? so we put Bicol Express, lots of chilies, and then uh, um, just to give it a bit of kick, a little bit of bagoong, the, the crispy uh, dry bagoong that we do here for the kare, kare From the food to the cable park, to the ever-expanding resort facilities, CWC has become such an overwhelming presence in Kamsur that sometimes it seems to eclipse everything else around it. But despite its extensive offerings, CWC is really just a foretaste of the deeper treasures that lie within Kamsur. A little over an hour's drive from CWC is the town of Tigawon, where the Konsosep Mountain Resort is located. Here, the pleasures of Mount Isarog can be enjoyed without breaking into much of a sweat, because a paved trail leads to three out of the 11 spectacular waterfalls of the mountain. The first of the three waterfalls is Tumagiti, so called because of its feather-like droplets that fall like rain. Continuing down the trail, the second waterfall comes into view, named Kawakawa because it is shaped like a kawali or frying pan. This waterfall looks almost like a dam. It pours into a plunge pool that is about six feet deep. Past Kawakawa is a tree house that was built on a maleta tree that wrapped around a tugawi tree. The paved trail ends at a third waterfall called Bulalakao. Bulalakao means meteor in the local dialect. The water here falls like a meteor shower into a pool whose depth can be gauged from the height of a submerged tree trunk. A very short drive from the Consosep Mountain Resort is a deer farm. The most common breed here is the Rusa, which is known for its ability to adjust to both dry and tropical weather, as well as its extreme shyness. There was one exception, though, that locals still talk about. A young stag who craved the company of people because his mother died when he was a baby. He was the one deer who would not run away when tourists dropped by, and would even let children ride him. Unfortunately, he died in a storm. Driving from Consosep in Tunaga, the cool green rice fields that adorn the landscape are replaced by the frenetic bustle of a city on the brink of an economic boom. Back on the streets of Naga, traces of the old Camarina Sur can still be seen. The University of Santa Isabel, established in 1868, still thrives as the oldest normal school for girls in Asia. 
the Church of Our Lady of Peña Francia, built in 1711 and named after the patroness of the Bicol region, is still a refuge for thousands of devotees. Along the route to the Caramoan Peninsula, more of Kamsur's 400-year-old devotion to the Catholic faith is evident in the number of grand old churches found in small towns. In the town of Goa is the Church of St. John the Baptist, which was completed in 1887. Further down the road, in the town of San Jose, is another large church erected in 1818. Caramoan itself has the church of St. Michael the Archangel, which was built in the early 1800s for the parish of Caramoan, which was established in 1619. Some travelers make a side trip to Agirangan Island on the way to Karamoan. This uninhabited island is only 30 minutes away from Sabang Port and is a popular excursion site. Its clean nipa huts are maintained by village leaders from the mainland town of Presentacion. Upon docking in Quijano Port in Caramoan, a 45-minute drive leads to Gota Beach near the tip of the Caramoan Peninsula. This is the jump-off point for exploring the islands of Caramoan. Caramoan rose to fame after word that an international series was shooting an entire season in the islands. Indeed. It is hard to imagine how a place of such immense beauty could have evaded the spotlight for so long. But perhaps this is the very reason why Karamoan has remained refreshingly unspoiled. No tiki bars taint its beaches. No shoddy resorts shatter the serenity of its coasts. Instead, there are soaring limestone cliffs and quiet coves that hark back to a more primeval time. The Gota Village Resort is one of the resorts in Karamoan. Just a few minutes walk from the well-appointed wooden cabins is the dining hall and the brilliant waters of Gota Beach. The name Gota comes from the phrase Gota de Leche, which means drop of milk. This was the original name of Karamoan, which was inspired by the milk drop shaped stalagmites in the area. Beside Gota Beach is Hunungan. The cove in front of this beach is exceedingly calm because it is sheltered by a small island that is close enough to swim to. A 15-minute boat ride from Gota is Matukad Island. The white sand here is as velvety soft as the most expensive and finely milled mineral powder. Near Matukad is Lahus Island, a narrow strip of beach that is open on two sides and looks like a land bridge connecting two small islands. Farther away from Gota, more discoveries await the intrepid soul. Pitogo Island has a beach made up of stones instead of sand. Sabitang Laya has a very long white beach that could have resembled the Boracay of a hundred years ago. Kutivas is the farthest among all the islands. But the most compelling of all is Tayak which has a mysterious lagoon gaping at its navel. 
Aside from swimming and island hopping, Caramoan is also a haven for other outdoor activities. The options for rock climbing, caving, and kayaking are so profuse that the biggest frustration will be not having enough time to do them all. Cruising around the islands of Caramoan, the inevitable questions arise. How long will this paradise last? Will it survive the onslaught of tourism? Comparisons have been made to other islands in the Philippines that are now collapsing under the weight of overdevelopment. The government of Kamsur is adamant that Karamoan will not suffer the same fate. The sins of the past have finally made the commitment to conservation real. The cliffs and the coves, the mangroves and the mountains still stand as regally as when they first welled up from the earth at the dawn of time. Karamoan's story is a story that has been heard before. The story of a secluded island, ringed with powdery white sand, shielded from the outside world, until it is catapulted into instant celebrity. Nothing is ever the same again after that. Open your eyes, look at them closely, and remember what you see. This is the way it has always been, and the way it should always be.